Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the walkthrough of our Bio 137 labs. Today, we're going to be looking at the model for the skin. We'll be seeing this from every angle, and in every angle, there are quite a few structures that we need to know for this lab. So let's go ahead and dive in. Right now, we're looking at the model from the front, and here we can see quite a few structures. Uh, first, let's look at the different layers. Up here near the top, um, from this angle, we can't see a whole lot uh, of it, but everything from this tan area upward, this is the epidermis. But from this angle, like I said, we don't really see very much of the epidermis here. What we do see is the dermis, and that is all of this blue area here. The dermis is the vast majority of our skin. And then going a little bit deeper, we see these yellow areas here. This is adipose tissue, this is fat, and this makes up the hypodermis. Now the hypodermis does extend up into the dermis here and there, as we can see. Now when we go back and start looking at the dermis, there are some structures here that we need to know. First, this whole thing right here, this is all going to pertain to hair. So let's look at the different parts that we see here. Up at the top, we can see where the hair actually protrudes through and comes out onto the surface of our skin. So this piece is the actual hair shaft. Down here at the other end, we see this kind of bulb-like area where it swells out a little bit. This is the hair follicle. So the hair shaft sits within the hair follicle. And in this part right here, we can see the hair follicle has been dissected away so that we can see inside of it. And again, this part is the hair shaft again. So the hair shaft is within the hair follicle. And attached to each hair follicle, we will see one of these right here. This is called an erector pili muscle. This is smooth muscle that contracts to stand your hair on end. We'll typically see some of these glands right here. These are oil glands. We actually, the more proper name for them are sebaceous glands. And these produce a product called sebum which it empties into the hair follicle and it spills up onto the surface of the skin. It lubricates the hair. It also coats the surface of the skin. Over here, we can see a sweat gland. Sweat glands, I always tell my students to think of as kind of like a, a very long water hose, garden hose that someone has kind of wadded up at one end. So it's all kind of coiled and kinked up deep in the dermis, but this part kind of straightens out and extends onto the surface of the skin. But this whole thing is a sweat gland. Now we can see a few other things from this view, but I'm not going to talk about them until we kind of rotate this model and we can see them a little bit better in another view. So now we've rotated it and we're looking at this model from the side and then over here we're looking at it from the other end on the side. And we can see quite a few structures again. Uh, let's start from the bottom. Again here we see the hypodermis. We can see that on both sides. And then again the majority is the dermis, this blue area. Now within the dermis, there are several structures we can see. If we look over here on the left, here is a hair follicle and the hair shaft within it. Here is a sweat gland that's been cut so that we can see the inside of it. Here is another hair follicle with a hair shaft inside. And we can also see the sebaceous gland associated with that hair follicle and an erector pili muscle. Another bit of erector pili muscle, it looks like here. Over here on the right, 
if we see something new, we see these large kind of oval layered structures. These are called Pacinian corpuscles. Over here on the left, we see this small little structure here. This is called a Meissner's corpuscle. So these are both corpuscles. They both detect touch. Meissner's corpuscles are closer to the surface of the skin and they're effective with detecting very light touch. Pacinian corpuscles are deeper in the dermis and they detect more firm pressure and vibration. So Meissner's corpuscle near the surface, Pacinian corpuscle deeper down. And one way that you can think about that is Meisner starts with an M, Piscinian starts with a P, M comes before P in the alphabet, M is closer to the surface than P is. Also here, we can see another sweat gland on this end, some more hair follicles with hair shafts inside. We can see another erector pili muscle now let's look at the dermis right where it meets the epidermis we can see that it's got this kind of wavy appearance we can see it over here again each of these waves these bumps here is called a dermal papilla dermal papilla p-a-p-i-l papil is a root word that means nipple and we can see these kind of bumps vaguely resemble a nipple so that's how it got its name and the reason that we have these kind of wavy appearances is because it almost acts like velcro to attach the dermis to the epidermis now the area of the dermis where we find these dermal papilla. So this area right here, this area right here, that's called the papillary layer. And it's very, very thin. The rest of the dermis is called the reticular layer. Papilla are in the papillary layer. Everything else is the reticular layer. So there's a lot more reticular layer than there is papillary layer. Now we go up into the epidermis. The epidermis actually has several layers. So if we look at the epidermis, there's this very faint one layer of cells, kind of purple in this image. That's called the stratum basale. the stratum basale. Actually, I'm going to erase that and write it a little bit lower so that we can go from bottom to top. The stratum basale. Just above that, we have this kind of yellowy tan region that's called the stratum spinosum. Just above that we have this blue layer that's called the stratum granulosum. And finally the top layer, which is a whole lot of layers of dead cells, it's protective, it's what sheds away throughout the day. And if you scratch your arm or scratch your leg and you see that kind of white powder, it's just some of that layer flaking away, that's called the stratum corneum. So from the outermost layer to the innermost layer, we have the stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basale. Now, that can be kind of tricky to remember, so one way to keep that in mind is come 
get some bacon. And who can't remember something about bacon? So if you keep this in mind, come get some bacon. That tells you the order of the layers of the epidermis from most superficial, the stratum corneum, to the most deep, the stratum basale. Now we're looking at the model from the back, and here we've seen everything already. We're just seeing other views of it. Starting at the bottom, we see the hypodermis. Most everything we see is the dermis. In the dermis, we have several hair shafts within hair follicles. The hair follicles will have these sebaceous glands attached to them. Also here we see erector pili muscles. We see a sweat gland here, a Meisner's corpuscle, some dermal papilla, the papillary layer where the dermal papilla are, the reticular layer which is most of the dermis. Then we have the epidermis, which begins with, at the deepest point, this layer here, the stratum basale. Then we have the stratum spinosum, the stratum granulosum, and the stratum corneum. So that's it for the skin model, and I will talk to you again soon.